Hi, we're going to have a look at the 2015 Higher Level Incomplete Records Type A. We know that this is a Type A Incomplete Record as down at the bottom we are asked to do a trading profit and loss account first and then a balance sheet, whereas with Type B you're asked to do a balance sheet first and then a trading profit and loss account. So the first thing we're going to do is the trading profit and loss account. And as the name suggests, these are incomplete records, so we're not given uh, figures for sales and purchases and bank and so on. We need to work these figures out. So to start off with our profit and loss for the end of 2014, the first thing, as in all of the trading profit and losses we're going to have, is sales. So we need to do a working for sales, which is working one. So first sales, there are two types of sales. Credit sales, who we sell to debtors who pay us back at a later day, date, and then cash sales, which we sell for cash and we get the money in straight away. So to work out the credit sales, and sales always go debtors and purchases always go creditors. So for the credit sales, we're going to start off with our debtors figure from bank lodgements. So if I go back to the question, you can see the debtors is 34,000 for bank lodgements. And then I'm going to add my debtors at the end, which come to 20,400. And I'm going to take away my debtors at the start of the question which is 18,000. And that's always the case for debtors and creditors. We went through this before. You add at the end and you take away at the start. Now, also in this question, there's a paragraph about a sale of, at the end of the year, goods with a sales value of 6,000, which have been sold on credit at a, mark, at a markup of 20% on cost, had not been recorded in the books. So we have to record this as a sale also. So that 6,000 is also go, going to go into sales. And it's a credit sale. So in total, we're going to have 34,000, which is the debtors figure from bank lodgements, plus my debtors at the end, minus my debtors at the start, and then add in the sale of 6,000, which was not recorded. So in total, my credit sales are going to come to 42,400. To work out my cash sales, if I go back to the question, I can see that the cash payments made during the year where there was lodgements of 110, general expenses of 45,800, and purchases of 86,200. But if all of these payments were made by cash, we must have got the money in initially from cash sales, or we wouldn't have been able to make the payments. So these are the first three figures we're going to include in cash sales. Then we also, um, there was cash of 120 per week for household expenses paid out during the year. So we must have got that money in from cash sales initially. So again, that's 120 by 52. And the same, and like debtors and creditors, we're going to add our cash at the end of 600, and we're going to take away our cash at the start of 400. So for the credit sales, I'm going to start off with the three figures from the bank payments. First of all, 110,000. I'm going to add the 45,800, and I'm going to add the 86,200. They are all coming from my cash payments because I wouldn't be able to make those payments if I didn't make the sales to get the money in initially. Then I'm going to add in the 120 euro a week that was paid out um, by cash, and 120 euro a week for 52 weeks comes to 6240. And then I'm going to add my cash of 600 at the end and take away my cash of 400 at the start. And in total, that would give me cash sales of 248,440. If I add that to my credit sales above, it gives me total sales of 290,840. So I'm going to fill that in to my accounts now. My sales are coming to 290,840. So let's cost of sales again as the heading. And the first thing I have in my cost of sales is the opening stock. And the opening stock I will just get from the top of the question. And I can see from the top of the question that opening stock is 17,000. There's no workings required there. Purchases, I need to do a working for purchases. So purchases is working too. So like this, this credit sales above, the credit purchases, I'm going to start off with my creditors figure this time. And then I'm going to add my creditors at the end and take away my creditors at the start. So from the question, I can see that the creditors uh, figure is 42,100. I'm going to add my creditors at the end of 32,600 and take away my creditors at the start of 22,000. 500. So 42,100 plus 32,600 minus 22,500 leaves me your credit purchases of 52,200. 
my cash purchases I can actually take directly from the question because I'm given my cash purchases are 86,200. So here my cash and purchases 86,200. That's coming directly from the question. So that leaves me with total purchases of 138,400. However, in the question it says that he took goods from stock to value of 100 euro a week uh, for household expenses. So they were that's drawings, so that has to come out of purchases because it's not uh, the business's expense, it's his own. So that 100 euro, 552 to 5,200 euro has to be taken away. And then that will leave me with purchases of 133,200. So in my accounts for purchases, would be 133,200. So my opening stock plus my purchases gives me 150,200. And now I have to take away my closing stock. So again, I'm gonna to need to do a note on closing stock. So the closing stock down at the bottom of the question, I can see here that my closing stock at the bottom of the question is 16,200. So it's gonna be 16,000. 200, but I have to take away uh, the sale of the stock not recorded. So it says that here the sale was for 6,000, but that's a markup of 20%. So, the, so that's a, that there is 120%. So I need to get the cost price, which is 100%, and take it away because if I made that sale, I don't have that stock anymore. So that's going to be 6,000 divided by 120 multiplied by 100 which is 5,000, and again, I'm going to be taking that away from stock because I, don't, I won't have that stock at the end of the year. So in total, my closing stock should be 11,200, and again, that's going to go into profit and loss and as a current asset in the balance sheet. So my closing stock is 11,200, and then my cost of sales is 150,200 minus 11,200, because my cost of sales are 139,000, and my sales, less my cost of sales, leave me with a gross profit of 151,840. On to my expenses then. So the first expense I'm going to have are general expenses. So I, I, if I do a note on general expenses, and usually in this question, the general expenses, there's usually some sort of wages due or prepaid at the start or the end of the year. So I can see from the question, if I look at my cash payments, general expenses are 45,800. Now, I have to check, are the wages due at, are prepaid at the start or the end of the year? I don't think there's anything at the end of the year for wages, but at the start of the year, there's wages due of 1,800, so that has to be accounted for. And again, at the start of the year, stuff that's due, I'm going to take away. So I'm going to take away the 1,800. And that will leave me with general expenses of 44,000. So I'm going to fill that in to my P&L. General expenses are 44,000. The next expense I have is light and heat. And again, I'm going to do a note for light and heat. So light and heat, I can see the light and heat from bank payments was 6,800. Now, electricity due at the end of the year has to be added on. As we say, said above here, at the end of the year, we're going to add stuff that's due. So the electricity due at the end of the year, I'm going to add on, and I get that from the very bottom of the question. It's 380 euro. And then drawings. It says, if I go look at the question, the paragraph on drawings, we can see that it says 25% of light and heat used should be attributed to the private section of the house. So it's 25% of light and heat used. So the light and heat used are the two of these together, not what was paid, what was actually used of 7180. So getting seven on eight and 25 percent of 7180 and i'm going to take that away and then that's going to go into my drawings note later on so in total light and heat should come to 5385 my next expense is loan interest and again i'm going to do a note on loan interest so the interest paid, I can see that the interest paid from the question, from the bank payments, interest is 1,500 euros. So that's what was paid. Now, to work out the total interest for the year, from the question, it says that they borrowed 120,000 
and the users to purchase a premises, a, a showroom of 90, and then the remainder, the other 30, was for furniture. But the 120 is what they borrowed. Now, the rate of interest is 5%, and they borrowed on the 1st of the 9th. So they had it for four months. So to work out the interest to be 120,000 by 5% by 4 over 12, because they had it for four months. So the total for the year should be 120,000 by 5% by 4 over 12, which is 2,000 euro. So the due part, which will go in the balance sheet, is 500 euro. Now, in the paragraph on drawings, it also says that 20% of interest payable, now not paid, interest payable, is attributed to the private section of the house. So I'm going to get, have to get 20% of the interest payable, which is the total interest of 2,000. So 2,000 by 20%. And again, I'm going to take that out. So that's going to be a minus figure because I'm taking it out of here and put in the drawings later. 400 euro. 400 euro is coming out of loan interest and will go into drawings, leaving me with a P&L figure for loan interest of 1,600. So if I go back to my accounts, here, loan interest is going to be 1,600 euro. My next note is going to be on insurance. So the insurance, I can see from the bank payments in the question that insurance paid during the year, the annual uh, premises insurance premium is 3,800 euro. From the top of the question, so I can see that from here, 3,800 euro. From the top of the question, at the start of the year, there's three months insurance prepaid of 1,200 euro. So there's three months insurance prepaid of 1,200 euro. And again, at the start of the year, stuff that's prepaid is added on. So I'm going to add on that 1,200 euro. Now, if there was three months prepaid at the start of the year, and then we paid annual insurance for the year, that means there's going to be three months prepaid at the end of the year. And to work out the amount prepaid at the end of the year, if we pay 3,800 for the year, if I divide that by 12 and multiply it by 3, it'll give me the three months prepaid at the end of the year. And at the end of the year, we take away things that are prepaid. So it's going to be minus 3,800 divided by 12 multiplied by 3. So I'm going to be taking out 950 euro, which will leave me with an insurance expense for the year of 4050. And the balance sheet figure will be 950. And the last expense we have is, is a donation. Um, we can see there from the bank payments that there was a charitable um, standing order for charitable organisations. So that donation is 3,000 euro. And there's no workings required there. So now if I add all my expenses together, they come to 58,035. And my gross profit less my expenses will leave me with 93,805. Now, then I have to add my interest from the investment fund. Now, I can see that the interest from the investment fund, I will get at the bottom of the question, the interest from the investment fund is was 30 euro interest earned on the investment fund. So that's 30 euro has to go in here. And that will leave me with a net profit of 93,835. Now I want to my balance sheet. So in my balance sheet, the first thing I'm going to have are intangible fixed assets, goodwill. So I'm going to have to do a note on goodwill. So that's going to be note eight. So the first thing we're going to have to, to calculate goodwill, uh, like we've done previously, we're going to have our assets minus our liabilities will give us what the company's worth. And then if we take that away from the purchase price, it will give us what the goodwill was. So we can fill in the purchase price first of all. So the purchase price was um, 220 euro, which we can get from the very top of the question. So it says the business was purchased for 220,000. So 220,000. And now it's just a matter of dividing up our assets and liabilities from the top of the question. So these are all coming from here. We're just dividing them up into assets and liabilities. So the first one, premises, and premises is an asset, and premises were 180,000. 
Then we had a stock, which was 17,000, that's an asset. Uh, we had debtors of 18,000, that's an asset. We had three months insurance prepaid of 1,200, which was an asset. Then we trade creditors of 22,500, which is a liability. There was wages due of 1,800, which is a liability. And there was cash of 400 at the start of the year, which was an asset. So if I total these up, my assets are going to come to 216,600. If I add up my liabilities, they come to 24,300. So my assets minus my liabilities should be what the company is worth, which is 192,300. I paid an extra amount for that. I paid 220,000. So the difference is goodwill, which is 27,700. So into my accounts for goodwill, I'm going to put in 27,700. My fixed assets, the buildings in this question here, the buildings at the start of the year were, so the premises were 180,000. Then they borrowed 120,000, um, part of which was used to purchase an adjoining showroom of 90,000. So if the premises were 180,000 at the start of the question, top of the question, and then they spend a further 90,000 to buy a showroom, which again would be included as premises. At the end of the year, the buildings came to 200, come to 270,000. Vehicles during the year, vehicles were, there was no vehicles at the start of the year. So my premises are coming to 180 here, plus the 90 showroom. There's no vehicles at the start of the question, but they did buy vehicles during the year. They bought delivery vans, which are 35,200. So that 35,200 will go in here under vehicles. And then the furniture, we're going to do a note on. So note number nine, we can do a note on furniture. Now, those furniture bought during the year. Um, during the year, there's furniture purchased for 30,000, we can see it here, the board, 120,000, 90 was for the showroom, and the remainder was used to purchase furniture. So the 30,000 was used to purchase furniture. Now we can see from the drawings note, it says that 25% of furniture was for the private section of the house. So of that 30,000, I have to take out 25% of it, and that will go into drawings. So I'm going to take it out of furniture and put it into drawings later. So I'm, I'm going to take out 6,000. So my furniture in the accounts is actually going to be 24,000. Now in this question, there's no depreciation. There's no uh, talk about any depreciation of these fixed assets. So there's no depreciation to put in. In some questions, there may be. So I'm just going to add these across and add them down. And that leaves me with total fixed assets of 329,200. Oh, sorry, I just want to go back and check that note nine. The furniture was 30,000 um, and the drawings was 25%. I, I put in 20%. So I'm just going to fix that quickly. So that's actually taking out 7,500 to leave me with 22,500. So the drawings is 25%, not 20%. So that will leave me with 22,500 here, and that will leave me with fixed assets of 327,700. And the last thing I have to put in is my investment fund. Now for the investment fund, financial asset, it says that uh, the, the capital sum was to be repaid in a lump sum in uh, 2022, and to provide for this, a bank was to transfer 1250 on the last day of each month from Murphy's business account to an investment fund starting at the end of September. So for four months of the year, they're transferring 1250 euro. So my investment fund is going to be 1250 by four, which would give me 5,000. But then I have to add in the 30 euro 
interest I received, which leaves me at 5,030. And again, that 30 euro came from the bottom of the question here, but 30 euro interest earned. So my total fixed assets is going to be my intangible fixed assets plus my tangible fixed assets plus my financial fixed assets. It's come to 360,430. Current assets. My first current asset is going to be closing stock. And again, we've a note done already on closing stock. We did working three years on closing stock, which is 11,200. I'm just going to take that figure from there. My debtors, I need to do a note on debtors, and that's going to be note 10. So for my debtors, the debtors at the end of the year from the question, the debtors were 20,400. But then there's a sale of 6,000 which wasn't recorded in the books and we're owed that 6,000. So the debtors at the end of the year will actually be 26,400. So my debtors are 26,400. And that 6,000 is coming from this paragraph here about the 6,000 which wasn't recorded, the sale that wasn't recorded. Note number 11 is my bank note. So I'm going to need to do a note on bank. So the first thing I'm going to have for my bank note are my lodgements. So my lodgements are coming from the bank lodgements part of the question. So I will get them from here, the bank lodgements. So the first thing I'm going to have is my debtors. So the debtors figure is 34,000. That will go there. The next thing I'm going to have are my cash lodgements, 110,000. And the next thing I put in are my dividends. They're all coming from the bank lodgements. Now, the company also got a loan. So the ones that aren't coming from bank lodgements are highlighted in grey, just so we don't forget them. Because the company uh, got a loan of 120,000, so they would have put that into the bank also, so we can't forget about that 120,000. Which leaves me with total bank lodgements of 268,000. My payments, again, I'm going to get from the bank payments part of the question here, along with some additional ones I need to put in. So to, to start off with the ones from the paragraph in the question, my creditors are going to be 42,100. Uh, light and heat is 6,800. Interest is going to be 1,500. The insurance is going to be 3,800. The charitable organization was 3,000. Delivery fans were 35,200. That's the model from the paragraph. Now, with the 120,000 they borrowed, so they're just all coming from the bank payments. With the 120,000 they borrowed, they spent 90 on a showroom and 30 on furniture, so they also need to go in to the payments. So the showroom was 90 and the furniture was 30. And they also transferred 1,250 euro a month for four months from the bank account to the investment fund. So they would have been payments out of the bank account. So they also need to go in. So the ones in grey, I suppose, are the additional ones that aren't in the paragraph that we have to try not to forget about. So for my payments in total, my payments are going to come to 217,400, which will leave me with a bank figure for the balance sheet of 3,600 and that's going to be an asset as my lodgements were bigger than my payments. So 50,600 was going to buy. Cash from the end of the question, I can see that my cash down from the very bottom of the question, the cash is 600 euro and there's no changes or adjustments to that, so that's just going to was in a 600 euro and my insurance prepaid i already have the note done on insurance prepaid it's included in my insurance note which is note number seven here so the insurance prepaid at the end of the year was 950 euro so that's coming from working seven 950 euro so if i add up all of my current assets they come to 89,750. 
Now I just need, I need to see my creditors amounts due within one year. Well, the first figure that's going to go in here are creditors. So my creditors in the question are 32,600 down at the bottom of the question, and there's no change to my creditors figure. The next figure I'm going to have is electricity due, which is also a liability at the end of the year of 380 euro. And my interest due I'm going to get from the interest note. So if I go back to my notes here on loan interest note 6, I can see the interest due at the end of the year was 500 euro. So that 500 euro is going to go in there. So in total, my creditors amounts, and I might move these over here. In total, my creditors amounts to within one year come to 33,480. And if I take that away from my current assets above, it leaves me with a working capital of 56,270. And that added to my total fixed assets above of 360,430, leave me with total net assets of 416,700. Now to finish off the balance sheet, the first thing I'm going to have under my finance buy is creditors amounts due within one year. And what will go in there is the loan. So the loan I can see that I borrowed was 120,000. So across from loan I put in 120,000. Capital is what we purchased at the very the business for at the very top of the question. The capital was 220,000. Capital introduced was any extra money that was brought in during the year. Now, sometimes they put in some of their own money, and here sometimes they get a grant. But in this question, the dividends is capital introduced. So there was bank lodgements, those 4,000 um, lodging dividends, so that would be capital that was introduced. And the net profit is just going to be my final figure from the P&L. which is 93,835. So I'm going to add all of those to give me 119,835. And I'm sorry, that should be 220,000. I'm missing a zero. So that comes to 317,835. And then I just have to take away my drawings. And my drawings is note 12. So my final note will be on drawings. And we have the majority of the work done for this drawings note already. So the first thing, and we've already done taken away this figure in note one is the cash. So I can see from this paragraph here that it's talk cash of 120 euro a week for 52 weeks, which would be drawings. So that'd be 120 by 52. And we've already talked about that in note one. They also took uh, goods for the value of 100 euro a week, so it should also be drawings, and we spoke about that in Note 2. Then 25% of the furniture was for drawings, and we looked at that in Note 9, 7,500. So we're taking out the furniture and putting it here in the drawings. The same with loan interest. We worked out the drawings figure for loan interest in Note 6, so I just have to include that, 400 come out of interest to go into drawings and also light and heat we took out the drawings figure from light and heat so if we go back to my light and heat note I can see that 1795 is taken from here and now we're going putting that into drawings so my total drawings figure comes to 21,135 so less drawings of 21,135 And I'll just put it in 21135, and we're going to take it away anyway because it's less. So 317835 minus 21135 of drawings leaves me with 296,700. And that 296,700 
added to the 120,000 above gives me about 416,700 for capital employed. And I can see now that my balance sheet has balanced. And the final part of the question is a small bit of theory. It says, explain the accruals concept and why is it fundamental to accounting practice? Well, the accruals concept matches expenses and gains to a specific period. All expenses incurred and income gained in a particular period must be included in the accounts of that period, regardless of whether they are paid, received or not. Example, electricity due for the current year must be included in the accounts. And that's why we said before we add stuff that's due and take away stuff that's prepaid. Although the bill may not be paid until the following year as the expense refers to the current year. So if it's for this year, it has to be included in the accounts. Advertising prepaid should not be included in the current year's accounts as the payment refers to the following year. So that's why you're taking away things that are prepaid at the end of the year. Similarly, all revenue income must be included in the accounts of that period, whether received or not. Items sold on credit must be treated as income immediately and not when the money is actually received. So it's when you make the sale, not when you receive the money, it must be included in the accounts. Financial statements are prepared on an accruals rather than on a cash basis. If financial statements are not prepared on an accruals basis, profits and assets will be overstated or understated for the period covered by statements because expenses and income included or excluded may refer to past or future period. So I hope that um, helps you with incomplete records and I hope you could please subscribe to the YouTube channel to have a look at some more questions. Thank you.